Hi everybody, welcome back to Darling Borough Model Railway. I'm Richard. In the video last week, I started to build a couple of matching scenic diorama models to compare different modelling techniques. I looked at forming hills and similar structures using polystyrene and also using cardboard and paper mache. Now, for the models, what I've decided to do is I want to add a rock cliff on the side of each model, kind of similar to the rocky bridge section that I've already built. What I'm going to do this week is look at a couple of ways that rocks and rock faces can actually be produced as a model. So the first technique that I want to share is by using plaster and the rock moulds. Now if you are creating plaster rock faces um, there is actually a wide variety of kind of ready-made um, rubber or silicon moulds that you can actually buy um, and then what you can do is you can use them to produce rocks that you can use on your layout. Now the main issue with rock moulds is they can actually be quite expensive um, especially if you are looking at sort of getting quite a wide range of different shaped rocks um, you do have to spend quite a lot out otherwise you'll have the same sort of rock repeated over and over also um, if you are using the same sort of molds that say somebody else is using there is a chance that your model or your um, sort of rock face could look quite similar to somebody else's especially if they are using the same models because you'll have the same shaped rocks however you can easily make your own completely unique uh, rock molds for a fraction of the cost. So in order to create the rock moulds I tend to use tin foil. It's very very cheap and very easy to use. Tin foil is too thin to use by itself so what you'll need to do is stick several layers together. You can do this using PVA, spray adhesive or as I tend to use a glue stick. I personally tend to use a glue stick to avoid any drying times caused by PVA. Once you've stuck the layers of tin foil together, what you'll need to do is fold up the edges. This will create the edges of the mould. When making moulds for plaster, try and not make them too deep. If they are too deep, it will take a lot longer to set, or may never set at all. Also, if you have deep moulds, the plaster may push on the sides and leak out. Once you've created your basic shape, what you need to then do is scrunch up the tin foil. By scrunching it up you add extra details which will appear as rock edges. Carefully unfold it and make it back into the shape of the mould. You can then focus on adding specific details you want to include. For example I have created deep dents here which will appear as deep ridges in my rocks. Next you'll need to use some plaster and some water. When you're creating your own moulds the type of plaster that you choose is obviously up to yourself. It is recommended that you use plaster of Paris however you can use other plasters. For example I'm using quick dry bonding plaster. The main reason is that um, I obtained it for free from somebody who had finished a job and had no longer need for it. You will need to mix your plaster according to the instructions. I normally find a 2 to 1 ratio of plaster to water is around about right, although you may want it slightly thicker. Give the plaster a really good stir. Make sure that no dry powder is in the bottom of the bowl. It may take a good few minutes to mix all the plaster. What you want is a thick pouring consistency, similar to a thick milkshake. This will enable you to fill the mould a lot simpler. If the plaster is too thick, it won't fill into the mould properly. Carefully pour the mixed plaster into your mould. Start from the middle and work your way outwards towards the edges. If you find that some of your edges are a little bit too low, you can always readjust them. Just be careful the plaster doesn't leak out. Once the plaster is poured into the mould, just smooth it out so that it's nice and even. And then what I tend to do is give the table a quick bang just to try and loosen any bubbles. If you see any bubbles on the surface, you can pop them. 
And then finally, before you leave your plaster mould to set, just double check there's no leaks coming from any of the corners. Depending on your plaster and the ambient temperature you're leaving it, it may take 24 to 48 hours to completely set. So I'm going to try and take the little mould out just to see how it's uh, coming on. It is still a little bit damp, so I'm not sure if it's going to work fully or if it's going to kind of fall apart. A little bit of crack in there. Okay, well it's come out mainly in one piece. A couple of little bits have crumbled away, but other than that, it's not been too bad. As you can see, you've got a lot of nice ridge details there, which will really, really be effective as rocks. It is still quite soft and crumbly, so I don't want to give it too much rough treatment. But it's all right. I will leave it to dry overnight as well, just to see if I can get it to harden up a little bit more. Okay, so it has been several days, I'm not going to lie, um, since I put the models and the moulds and stuff together. Um, I've had to wait an age and a day for everything to dry. At one point, I must admit, I was even considering it wouldn't dry. I thought maybe I'd made the mixture wrong, uh, maybe made it too watery, and I was basically just going to have a big failed mess. But, alas, it's finally dried. The rock moulds um, have completely dried and set and they are really really nice. So I just carefully peel the tin foil away from the plaster on the rock mould. Obviously I do this nice and slowly so that I don't break the plaster. It's just a case of being careful, try not to pull any of the details out of the plaster. And then when you're finished you should have something that looks like this. As you can see the crumples and folds in the tinfoil mould have made really nice rock textures on the plaster. This should be ideal to work with. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to trim the rock mould down so that I can use parts of it as the rock face for the polystyrene based model. As the plaster is fairly brittle, I can just break it off by hand. If need be, you could also use a cutting knife or craft knife if that would work better for you. I took some time and built up the rock face as I wanted it on the model. It involved breaking pieces of the rock face apart and placing them on the model where I wanted them to go. It was a little bit like working out a jigsaw without a picture. The pieces didn't have to go together perfectly as I would be able to fill the gaps afterwards. With the plaster rock faces, I tend to use a hot glue gun to stick them to the polystyrene mould. I use the glue gun because basically it's a lot quicker and it glues everything in place nice and firm. The only downside is you don't have a lot of working time with a hot glue gun. So the best thing to do is dry fit everything so you know where it's going to go before you stick it in place. Now, if messing around with plaster seems like a lot of hard work to produce rock faces, you can actually just use bark pieces to make your rocks. Bark pieces can actually give off the impression of rocks and once painted um, the texture of the bark can actually look like really really effective rocks. Bark pieces are often sold in large bags in garden centres. These tend to be much cheaper than scenic bark. Remember to treat natural products to prevent bacteria, fungus or mould growing which could ruin your layouts. So I'm going to be using the bark on the paper mache versions. The idea is that these can be glued on as well to form rocks. Yeah. 
so that's where we are now um, as you can see both models have now had rock faces attached to them um, I have used hot glue for both of them um, because uh, basically it works really really quickly really effectively it keeps everything firm in place now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to cover the models in uh, a plaster based material um, to kind of smooth out the rest of the models and also fill any gaps between the rocks and the pieces of bark. This will bring everything together and then hopefully uh, once it dries it will look a lot more uniform across both models. Now what I'm going to be using is I'm going to be using a shredded mixture of paper towels and plaster. I shred the paper towels as small as I possibly can and add the plaster before adding water and mixing everything together. I add the paper towels because it creates bulk within the plaster and it makes it slightly easier to shape. I then take this sloppy plaster mixture and I use it to finalise the shapes on the hill. What I will do is I will squidge it in between any gaps and smooth everything off. Now there are existing products with very similar properties. I cannot speak for them because I've never used them. All I've used is my own version of this. However, I have put some links down below to alternative pre-made products. With the paper mache model, I also chose to use the plaster over the model as well. The main difference is I made sure that this was a lot thicker by adding a lot more toilet roll. The reason was so I can smooth it out even more than it was before. It also allowed me to push plaster material underneath and between the gaps of the bark pieces. So, without making the video too long, I'm going to stop it there. Both models are now at the same stage. They've had the rock faces attached and then the plaster has been applied on top just to smooth everything together, fill in any gaps. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to leave it to dry. Um, one of the problems of using any kind of wet material when you're building either scenery or parts of your layout, um, unfortunately, is drying times. I will be continuing this video next week. I will be looking at different painting techniques because obviously both of the models do actually require a completely different approach when it comes to painting them. I'm also going to look at flocks, scenery, uh, scenic materials, that sort of thing as well. It would also be interesting to know if you've got any feedback, any tips or any suggestions, or maybe, uh, you know, what is your favourite type of uh, technique that I've used so far? By all means, drop me a, a message, uh, send me a comment, everything's all up there. Um, and also, if you are um, enjoying the channel, give it a big thumbs up, buy me a coffee that's all I ask you know <laughs> um, don't forget uh, there are other videos that you can watch as well if you are interested in uh, sort of other techniques um, here are a couple of videos here and I will see you again next week thanks very much for watching